The law defines public procurement as a tool to be used whenever the government is purchasing any items in different kinds and whenever the government is disposing any assets, for instance like cars or government houses, whatever belongs to the government, whenever time comes for disposing it or for selling it out, let us take it in simple terms, selling and buying, and then this way the law comes into force. Truly the law is being implemented, but it depends on who is implementing the law. But the law already, it is actually in the Minister of Finance. In the Minister of Finance, there's a department called Procurement and Disposal of Assets. And it has got a direct general. And that direct general is responsible solely for any sales or buying of anything belonging to the government and mostly the contracts whenever the big contracts are being made they pass through that uh, department say that the law is implemented and to avoid any mishandling or mismanagement in any form there are different institutions which shall could inform the public about the procurement. Number one, civil society is one institution which actually can get the information about what is happening in public procurement department. Number two, through audit general, because most of the time, whatever happened, there's an auditing report yearly about what is taking place in the Minister of Finance. And definitely, all the contracts will pass through the audit chamber. And then, thirdly, whenever we are making a budget or whatever comes, all the information concerning the contracts, which one had already finished, which one is still yet, still the public can get the information through something called public hearing, whereby through public hearing, even the people could be invited, anybody can be invited to come and hear and give opinion about what is happening. So those tools actually are the means where the public can, do, can know what is happening. Thirdly, even through the media, the media always like uh, freelance media, they go and sift through the government offices to know exactly what is happening. And sometimes they inform the people or they inform the public about what is uh, happening or taking place in those institutions. So there are a lot of tools, means, which actually can inform the public of what is actually happening exactly. Public procurement is actually it's very important. It's very important because it's the only way where the government can stop corruption, let us take it in that term, because the law is very clear and has stated it very clearly the process and the procedure which are to be done whenever a contract is being made. Because there are requirements. And that those requirements are actually is, uh, laid out by the public procurement department to uh, whoever wants to, to do a contract or to do, a, to do a deal or to do any job with the government. The first thing that comes to my mind is that somebody has been assigned to procure particular services or assets on behalf of the public. So it's the process of spending resources that belongs to the public and I'm part of the public. Public procurement per se is a responsibility and is a responsibility whereby those who are entrusted to carry out that particular task are carrying out the task on behalf of the ordinary citizens, on behalf of those children on, who are in the villages, those children who are not even in those offices. The public officers who are in charge of public procurement are doing that on behalf of the, these people. They're doing it on behalf of the vulnerable people. They're doing it on behalf of the old people out there. So 
it's a huge responsibility because our population is estimated to be over 12 million. That means the particular procurement is being done on behalf of over 12 million South Sudanese. It is a huge responsibility and people must care on how it's being done because that particular procurement, whether it's a service or an asset, it's being acquired on my behalf. So it matters to me. There is clear link between public procurement and service delivery. Because as I said earlier, the public procurement is either procuring an asset or a service on behalf of the people. And that directly connects to service delivery to the people. Because for example, if the process is instituted to procure an asset, then what does that asset have to do with the people? What service can it offer to the people and why? If it's procuring a service of a person, what is that person supposed to do to the public? And when we talk about public procurement, I, I would like people not to only look at possibly the assets and the V8s, but we should also look at recruitment. That is also an element of public procurement because it's services we are procuring on behalf of the public. And public finance is going to be, or public resources are going to be utilized in order to facilitate that process. So it's directly connected. And this brings me to the element of what is the priority of the public. In, in a nutshell, I want to say that public procurement processes must correlate to priorities of the public and that priority must be seen in terms of services.